The next question is what are the necessary conditions for a deadlock? So, at what conditions the deadlock will occur? Conditions are mutual exclusion, hold and wait, no preemption and circular wait. Mutual exclusion means where at least one resource is non-shareable. Hold and wait is a situation where a process holds one resource and it is waiting for other resource. No preemption is where the resources can't be preempted. Circular wait is where PI is waiting for PJ to release a resource, whereas PJ is waiting for a resource that is held by PI. So that becomes a circular wait. So this conditions lead to a deadlock. Let us see our next question. What is cache memory? Cache memory is nothing but a random access memory or a RAM that the computer microprocessor can access more quickly than a regular RAM. As the microprocessor processes the data, it looks first in the cache memory and if it finds the data there, then it does not have to do more the more time consuming reading of data from a larger memory. So easily you can access your data from the cache memory. These questions are highlighted in the interviews where the candidates are aspiring to be in TCS and in FOSIS. Let us move on to our next question. What is logical and physical address space? Logical address space is generated from CPU and it is bound to a separate physical address space that is a central to proper memory management. Physical address space is seen by the memory unit whereas your logical address space is a virtual address space. Both these address space will be same at compile time but they will differ at execution time. If you see a logical address space is 346 whose exact physical address would be 14346 in memory. So this will be the difference between a logical and physical address space. Our next question is differentiate between a compiler and an interpreter. An interpreter reads one instruction at a time and it carries out the actions implied by that instruction. It does not perform any translation. That is, your interpreter does not perform any translation, whereas your compiler translates the entire instruction. So, a compilation takes a little bit of more time. Whereas your interpreter takes even more time. These questions are highlighted in interviews of Infosys and Polaris. Let us see our next question. What is throughput, turnaround time, waiting time and response time? Throughput is nothing but the number of processes that complete their execution per unit time. Turnaround time is the amount of time to execute a particular process. Waiting time is the amount of time that a process has to wait in the ready queue. Response time is the amount of time it takes from when a request was submitted until the first response will be produced. Not the output but the response. Let us see our next question. What is real-time system? A real-time process is a process that must respond to the events within a certain time period. In real-time operating system, 
an operating system that can run in real time process will be successful our next question is explain the concept of distributed systems distributed systems work in network if there is a network of computers then distributed system work they can share the network resources and they can communicate with each other in the network so this is your distributed system our next question is what is a long term scheduler and a short term scheduler a long term scheduler are the job schedulers that select processes from job queue and they load them in the memory for execution the short term schedulers are cpu schedulers that select the processes from the ready queue and they allocate to the cpu to one of them so that they can execute our next question is what is a daemon daemon is a program that runs in the background without the user's interaction daemon usually runs in multitasking operating systems like unix daemon is initiated and controlled by a special program called as processes so daemons run in background using processes these questions are highlighted in tcs and infosys interviews let us move on to our next question what is busy schedule busy waiting the repeated execution of a loop code while waiting for an event to occur is called as busy waiting the cpu is not engaged in any real productive activity during this period and the process does not progress toward completion hence busy waiting is nothing but waiting for an event to occur by execution of a loop let's see our next question what is the difference between primary storage and secondary storage in primary memory is nothing but your main memory which includes your hard disk and ram that is where your operating system resides secondary memory is your external devices like cd floppy magnetic disks etc secondary storage cannot be directly accessed by the cpu it is an external memory storage let us see our next question what is meant by dual mode operation in order to protect the operating systems and the system programs from malfunctioning programs we have two mode of operations which includes the system mode or kernel mode which is a secure mode and a user mode of operation so this is known as dual mode operation our next question is what are the different types of real time scheduling hard real time scheduling and soft real time scheduling are the different types of real time scheduling to complete a critical task within a guaranteed amount of time is known as your hard real time scheduling or systems soft real time computing is nothing but a critical process receive priority over less fortunate ones so this is known as soft real time computing that is a type of real time scheduling a next question is what is relative path and absolute path absolute path is nothing but exact path from the root directory whereas the relative path is relative to the current path if you see over here we have exact path from the root directory that is the absolute path and if it is a relative path it has to move 
all over to get a relative path to the current path if you are aspiring to be a tech mahendra or a tcs candidate these questions are important the next question is what is dram dram is nothing but the abbreviation of dynamic ram it stores the data in the form of capacitance static ram stores the data in terms of voltages so that is dram thank you so much for joining gtech on learning interview questions based on os hope you have got an idea about the operating systems basics